what goes great with turkey on Thanksgiving Day? Football, of course. And in today's episode of the I Can't See You podcast, I'm going to tell you about a fantasy football league filled with blind people. All coming up next on the I Can't See You podcast. From Studio C, welcome to the I Can't See You podcast with David. He can't see, but he's got a lot to say and a face for radio. Hello there and welcome to episode 50 of the I Can't See You podcast. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. In fact, if you've been following me lately on Instagram, you've noticed I've posted a lot of blind selfies, which uh, you may or may not like. (laughs) I'm not sure even my mom would like it. Um, But I, I do appreciate you listening to episode 50. And today, because it's Thanksgiving Day here in the United States, Um, One of the staples of Thanksgiving Day is football, and I thought it would be fun to talk about the Blind Abilities Fantasy Football League. And uh, if you haven't tuned in before, uh, Blind Abilities is a podcast or a group of podcasts that um, talk about uh, different things blind folks do. There's there's a technology show called That Blind Tech Show, which is my favorite of all of them. Uh, but there are some other episodes where they talk to blind people that do certain things. There are some that focus on uh, blind kids in school, getting ready for college, getting ready to, once they finish college, go out and get a job. So uh, if you do have uh, any kind of vision issues um, or are blind or have a loved one or a friend who is blind, Uh, by all means, point them in the Blind Abilities podcast direction because um, uh, they all have a great amount of information. Uh, Again, my favorite is that Blind Tech Show um, where uh, three of the folks talk about different things that work for blind folks as far as apps for for your iPhone or things that don't work with apps for your iPhone. Uh, and so forth and so on. And it's just, it's just, a, there's a great, a great amount of information and, and also it's, it's fun to listen to. So uh, again, blind abilities, uh, check it out. You can get them wherever you get podcasts. If you've gotten mine, you can get it. Um, so take a look around. So I, I just thought it would be fun. And, um, I know a lot of folks play fantasy football, um, and and I've enjoyed it for, I don't know, 15 or 20 years or so. And this year, I'm only in one league, which is sad because my team is terrible. I mean, I have one win, and and it all starts at the beginning, as it usually does. And it shows, <laughs> it shows why drafting is so important. Uh, and uh, with the draft um, this year, I was at a concert, so I had mine set to auto-draft. And um, what that got me was Patrick Mahomes. Okay, that's good. Melvin Gordon was my second-round pick. Not so good because he sat out for probably half the year. And uh, along the way, I picked up two kickers. Both of them were good, but, you know, who needs two kickers? Um, Fortunately, I did have two kickers because one of them... uh, Stephen Guskowski of the New England Patriots got hurt, so I was able to fall back to Greg Zerline of the Rams, which um, again both were good. But you know, kicker's not gonna not gonna crush it for you uh, like a like a good running back or wide receiver. And um, I also happened to get two tight ends, which turned out to be okay because I did same thing. Uh, my uh, number one tight end um, got hurt. I went to the second one until it was his bye week, and then I dropped him and picked somebody else up and now that guy's gotten hurt and that that seems to be (laughs) that seems to be my issue for the entire season um you know I have a guy and um he would if he was good he'd get hurt if I had a guy and um I would drop him to pick somebody else up the minute I dropped him he became good um as opposed to last year where I went to the finals um this year when I picked up somebody they did nothing for me. Last year, I could pick up a guy who was, you know, working at an insurance agency the week before, and he'd, he'd score me some decent amount of points, you know, his first week back. Um, This year, like I said, I could pick up an MVP type uh, person and uh, nothing. Uh, So uh, midway through the year, I traded Patrick Mahomes so I could get two decent players. Um, You know, I I had a, I was going into a bye week for my quarterback, who was Russell Wilson, um, also having an MVP type season, um, 
and so I, I got a I got a quarterback and a running back because I was desperately in need of both. And then I got a little worried because I did play Carson Wentz was the quarterback that I got. Um, but I worried because again I'm in suburban Philadelphia. The Eagles are my team, and um, I, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to jinx him. Now I did drop him once Russell Wilson went through his bye week because I didn't want to be <laughs> I didn't want to be the one to ruin the Eagles' chances. And if anybody watched the game last weekend against Seattle, um, he didn't do very well. And I was happy that I dropped him before that game. So that's not on me. That's somebody else. And, and I noticed somebody picked him up uh, today. And uh, I'm hoping that that really sparks him and uh, uh, that'll, that'll help him uh, have a good game this weekend against the Dolphins. And um, But, you know, it, it's interesting when you think, you know, okay, it's a, it's a league full of blind folks that do fantasy football. And, and again, like I said, I've done two leagues um, the last few years. Um, this year we're down to one. Um, the other league that I'm in is, you know, I was the only person who couldn't see. And that made it tough sometimes on draft day because we had a time limit of a minute and a half or two minutes to draft. And um, I would have to actually practice uh, with mock drafts just to figure out where everything was. And, um, you know, some of the some of the things that we use, the and, and I'm trying to remember in the non-blind league uh, last year and the last few years, what... Um, service we used for our league, and I want to say it was ESPN, but I don't remember for sure, it wasn't 100% accessible, the, meaning the app. Um, now, in Blind Abilities, uh, we use uh, Yahoo Sports, and, um, and that app is actually really good. Um, it makes it easy to um, drop people, pick people up, change your lineup. Um, basically, anything that you can do on the desktop which is where I, again, where I prefer to do everything because I can zoom in because I do have a, enough sight and if I zoom in enough, I can, um, you know, kind of get an idea. Although, and, and I'll explain this a little more in a couple minutes, um, sometimes when I rely on my sight too much, it ends up uh, biting me in the butt because I think I see one thing and I see something else. Um, and uh, once we uh, get ready to bring on our guest, I will uh, I'll, I'll explain a little more about that. Um, but this year I'm in dead last. Uh, I have no chance of making the playoffs. If I were in any of the European football leagues, meaning soccer, I'd be relegated and I would have been relegated weeks ago. Um, you know, it's just, again, whatever I did as far as picking somebody up, it wasn't the right guy or there, there weren't any guys that were good enough that they could do anything. And I just had, you know, one week I had six guys either on a bye, which means their team wasn't playing that weekend, or that were hurt. So, you know, I had to drop some people that I would rather have not dropped, but I, I had no choice because I needed to fill out a roster. And, um, you know, that was frustrating. And and once I got, uh, after uh, after about six or seven games, you know, when I was one in six or one in seven or, or so forth, and I knew it wasn't, it, it was frustrating to that point. But after that, it just actually became funny. And, I, it, you know, I always wondered how I was going to lose um, in a, any particular week. And, and in this past weekend, um, the, the person that cost me was, was Russell Wilson, of, of all people, because um, he was my quarterback against the Eagles. And I thought, OK, well, at least he's going to have a good game. You know, I figured the Seahawks were going to beat the Eagles, which they did. But it wasn't the type of game that I was expecting. I thought he would have a pretty big game. He didn't. Therefore, I lost by 20 points. Not that he would have gotten me all those 20. Um, I expected I expected him to get at least half half of that in addition to what he got, which was only around 10 points. Um, but last year I was in the finals and typically the way I would lose would be I'd forget to put a guy in. Um, in fact, that's what happened in the finals last year. I picked up a guy and, you know, towards the end of the season, the NFL has games on Saturday. Well, we were out and about visiting my mom and I forgot to put the guy that I had just picked up in. In, on the championship week. And, you know, of course he went off and had a great game and I ended up losing by a few points that had I played that guy, I would have won. And, you know, and that's how I usually lose, you know, um, obviously some years you have teams that, you know, that just don't do anything. And, and this year just has been awful. And, uh, you know, just about anything that I do, you know, doesn't help. And only one game all season was the loss because I played the wrong 
team or person on my roster. One, one thing that we do in blind abilities, um, we don't do independent defensive players, which the other league I was in did. And I could always rely on my defense to get me a decent amount of points because I had, I always, I always went to, uh, draft the defensive players fairly early. So I would get really good players, good linebackers. Um, the defensive linemen usually, you know, was a crapshoot and they never brought many, many points in any one game. Even, even somebody strong like Aaron Donald, um, unless he had a monster game, you're still only talking, you know, eight to 12 points. Whereas a linebacker who has a strong game, maybe has an interception, you know, you could get somewhere between 15 and 20 points. Um, so in blind abilities, we just pick team defense. And um, for the most part, I've relied on the Ravens. I, I, they were drafted for me, which was great. I mean, again, the you know, auto draft you know, scored well on that one. Um, and one week, you know, in all the different studying I was doing, I, I thought, oh, you know, the Ravens are playing somebody good. And I, I think it was the week they played New England. And, and of course, they ended up beating New England. But I thought, you know, I thought, you know, Patriots are going to win. It's probably going to be high scoring. I'm not going to get a lot of points from the Ravens defense. So I didn't play them and all the different cheat sheets that I use and, uh, you know, had, uh, other teams higher. And I ended up picking up another team and I, I don't remember who it was. Had I played the Ravens that week, um, I would have won that game. And, and that was the only time this year that I had a team on my roster or a player on my roster that had I played them, I would have won. Um, and that's unusual. You know, that usually happens, you know, four or five times in a season. If you play this guy, you, you would have won if but you played some other guy. And again, with blind abilities, um, you know, it's kind of neat because, you know, we're all over the country. Um, the other league that I was in, primarily everybody was from uh, the Philadelphia area. There were there were one or two guys that were, you know, from outside the area who were friends of friends and, you know, that got involved. But um, but for the most part, everybody was either in or from uh, the Philadelphia area. And, um, you know, it's just it's just a lot of fun. And, and um, you know, it makes the games more interesting. And and again, when in a couple of minutes, when I bring on uh, David Cleveland from uh, the Cleveland Daves, um, his, his team name. Oh, and by the way, my team name is the St. Croix Anole. And an Anole is a lizard. St. Croix Anole is a, a lizard that is, you know, native to St. Croix. There are others. Um, uh, and in the United States, um, there are, there are evidently are a bunch that are down in the Carolinas that I just think, uh, are called Anole. Um, but, uh, but that's my team name. And again, if you listen last week, I wanted to move, I talked about someplace warm and, um, you know, St. Croix is a place that I'd like to investigate once we decide it's time to move and we're going to move to where it's warm. And that's the reason I, I named my team that. Um, and as I explained to, to David, um, I, I love my team name that I used in the other league, which was FC Tunguska. I made up a great logo for it. And, um, but when I had both leagues going at the same time, I was afraid I would get mixed up with um, listening to something and hearing, you know, FC Tunguska and thinking it was one league when it was the other. And, um, so that's why I named it something different because again, I didn't trust either seeing something or, or hearing it and figuring, Hey, this is what it is. Um, so, uh, that's the reason for two different team names, but I love that. And, uh, that team name, and I've used it for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years, um, in the other league. Uh, which hopefully will come back because I, I do miss um, doing the defensive players. Um, and it's, again, it's just something that, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of trash talk throughout the season with different people, you know, in the league and, and trash talking, let's face it, is basically, you know, a message on the message board or something like that, or a text message if it's, uh, if it's somebody that's uh, a little bit closer than, uh, than just somebody else playing in the, <laughs> in the fantasy league, but it's a lot of fun. And, um, so, uh, and I, I got some good insight from, uh, from David when, uh, when we spoke and, um, you know, I'll get to that in one sec. Um, but before I get to that, I do want to thank everyone who's donated to my birthday, um, fundraiser over on Facebook and there's still time, uh, facebook.com slash David Benj. And, uh, at this point you have to scroll down a little bit to get to, um, the fundraiser and the fundraiser benefits the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. 
And uh, my, I set my goal at $250, which, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it was a little too low. Uh, but as of this recording time, I am at $260. And, and I do want to thank everyone who has, uh, has donated, Dan and Mark and Mitch, um, Mrs. Canalan, I appreciate it, um, Vicki, uh, and I hope, and, and Rebecca, uh, I believe they are the, uh, the donors. Um, if I've forgotten you, I apologize. Um, but I will thank you personally online if I haven't already. And uh, again, I, I really would appreciate any any amount that you can give would be would be greatly appreciated. And again, it goes to help uh, blind and visually impaired Pennsylvanians, um, you know, get help with um, either mobility or um, school and get uh, access, have access to um, things that will help them in school or find a job or whatever um, that help they need um, because they're blind or visually impaired, severely visually impaired. Obviously, if you just need a pair of glasses, it's, <laughs> it's not going to, uh, you know, it's not, that, that's not, uh, you know, what it's going to go for. But, you know, a lot of the things are very expensive that help blind folks out, whether it's, um, you know, devices to help you, um, you know, use your computer or like I said, you know, uh, white canes, um, things like that. So again, facebook.com slash David Benj. And, um, and I appreciate any donation you could give. I'm really excited to introduce our guest for today. And he is another owner of a blind abilities fantasy football league team. He is the owner of the Cleveland Daves. David, welcome to the show. And I have to say that you are the one that has assured me of finishing at the bottom of the table this season. Oh, it's great. Great to be on the podcast. Uh, yeah, it's been kind of a tough year for everybody. It looks like uh, there's only a few that have really shined in our league. Most people are around uh, seven and five now. Yes. And this, and this well, weekend, you know, looking at the, looking yeah. at the matchups, you know, you know, you win this weekend, you're definitely in, even if you lose, I think you could still make it in. Um, only Possibly, one yeah. game, yeah. only one game doesn't mean anything uh, against right. teams that, uh, you know, that are, that are bad. Um, you know, like mine, not as bad as mine, however. Um, and, you know, mine started with the draft. And, um, you know, now I've, I've learned that um, when uh, the commissioner says, does anybody have a problem with a certain date? If I have a conflict now, I'm going to say yes, because I used auto draft to pick my team and I ended up with uh, two kickers. Um, and oh uh, maybe two tight ends. I can't remember back, uh, back that far, but you know, I had a couple of the first two guys were pretty good. Uh, you know, I got Mahomes in the first round and Melvin Gordon in the second round. It didn't help that Gordon sat out for the first, you know, six or eight weeks. Um, yeah. That's a killer. Yeah. So, um, who was your, um, who was your number one? Do you uh, I, I went with, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, and, okay. Uh, he's, on our local team, the Texans, right. I follow right. him pretty closely. And he, he's usually pretty good for like 20 points or more, you know, kind of per game. But he has a few disappointing games where he didn't score a touchdown and didn't really get targeted at all. I mean, he, I guess for him, he's kind of had a, a lower than average year for um, for fantasy purposes, at least. Right. Although this, um, this week he, he got 27. He got you 27. Yeah, he, so. yeah, <laughs> he did kick, kick some butt this, this week. That was kind of a – aberration for him at least for this year but there's been several weeks when he barely cracked a 10 oh wow 10 okay point. i mean he kind of uh well he usually good for like 15 he's probably a solid 15 but I, I was kind of hoping he would kind of give me that a uh, little edge right you know, to win a lot of these contests but uh i did do good with um uh what's his name uh the uh uh oh shoot i'm uh now i'm drawing a blank uh Guy from Minnesota. Let's see. Uh, well, my running back. Uh, oh, you got you got Cooks. Uh, oh yeah, uh, not Cooks. Uh, um, well, I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't want. <laughs> um, uh, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dalvin yeah, yeah. Cook. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So these, it's hard to keep all these names straight. I, I kind of. I think sometimes I over over research all this, and I can't remember all <laughs> it. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts about okay. fantasy also. And, uh, okay. you know, they're always telling you, who, oh, you need to sit this guy. You need to pick this guy off of waivers. And, right. Um, well, I hadn't, I, I've been trying to go pretty aggressively on the waiver wire, but I, it looks like there's a lot of competition out there. A lot of people are. 
it, also it, look at the same guys, you know. Right. And it definitely <clears throat> seems like it this year um, compared to last year um, where, you know, there were guys that would sitting that would sit there. In fact, when I saw my team, when I came home, I, I was at a concert. When I came home from the concert and I saw my team, I'm like, oh, boy. And I thought, OK, well, I'll just pick these guys up. I'll wait till week one. And there's always somebody that comes out of nowhere. And and then everybody was, you know, yeah, like you say, they were all jumping on on the uh, on the guys. And um, um, let's just take a step back. So, how many years have you been um, in the Blind Abilities League? Oh, uh, I think I was in the first year they started, but okay. I don't remember when. It was either four or five years ago. I oh think. wow! Okay. Right. Okay. Um, or, I've I've only um, been in. This is only my second year, and let's um, see. could be four years. Um, okay. Only. Uh, um, I've never really gotten into the top, you know, championship level okay. any time. I think I might have finished third or fourth in time, and then okay. Um, well, I think yeah, win this a, weekend, I think you finish third if you win this weekend. I think. Oh uh, yeah, I think well, you get a three. Well, well that'd be good. Uh, well, yeah, regular, but yeah, the regular season of right doesn't did, really matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> I think they're coming pretty close to the top in regular season, but then I lost in the playoffs. Which okay. Of course that's also another – that can also be kind of a tra- crapshoot, you know, because – Right. You know, every, every week is kind of – need a lot of luck, but uh, – Right. Yeah, and I hope you guys don't get get injured and all that. Right. So um, – um, And as far as um, – as far as – so you've listened to the Blind Abilities podcast for quite a while, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I listen to, um, well, especially the, the the blind tech show. That, oh yeah, that, that's uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's um, you know, some of the other things and, are hit or miss for me, it, but uh, but yeah, that is it, I just love listening to that. Yeah, and uh, so I listen to some of the other interview um, segments they do with uh, if people sound interesting. I'll listen right to their, uh, their interviews. Yeah, right. So and and, it's, uh, and and as far as do you do any other fantasy football? Uh, no, I've, I've just been kind of focusing on this team. I played around a little bit with the daily fantasy, but I, I okay. haven't done too well in that either. Okay. Um, so, uh, I, uh, just trying to focus on kind of win- winning this league. <laughs> right. Gotcha. <laughs> but, okay. but, 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 uh, looks like I've got a lot of competition, this competition. I didn't, didn't get Christian McCaffrey. I didn't get, uh, <laughs> Lamar Jackson. I didn't get all these guys that are killing it, you know, you know and it, and so. it also, it also seems, you know, as, as I had um, in the message boards where, where I had posted, you know, I'd mentioned this, you know, some years you just get lucky with a player or players where, you know, like I said, last year I could pick up a guy that wasn't on a roster the week before and he'd go out and get me 20 points. You know, this year I, I can't pick up a guy that, you know, can get me 10 points on a regular basis. And um, yeah. you know, it's just how it goes sometimes. And, you know, there's a lot of years when I play. And and up until this year, I was in two leagues. This year, I was, unfortunately, the other league that I was in, uh, a couple of the guys were too busy. So we didn't, we didn't do it. But, you know, I had been doing that league probably for 15 years. And, you know, I'd won a couple of years. Um, last season or season before, I ended up um, winning on the last day of the of the season, you know, we did two two um, two. There were two winners basically: one that won the quote unquote Super Bowl and the playoffs and whatnot, and then one that had most points. And um, and the the cool thing about that was, you know, there was money involved. So <laughs> so that yeah, that yeah. always makes it interesting. And and um, but you know you know in most years there's always a handful of games that oh if I only played this guy I would have won or if I only played that guy I have to say this year there was only one time <laughs> that happened to me that's how bad my team is um, yeah you know, it's 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 just it always is a it always is a crapshoot it seems and you know you can't do anything about the points that are scored against you um, you know with um, you know, looking at, for example, Brian, who is uh, the commissioner, um, he has the second most points scored against him. And he was always putting up big numbers. But for whatever reason, the guys he was playing were putting up bigger numbers. And yeah, yeah um, that's kind of lucky that way. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, and uh, I think because I think he has the most points, you know, of any. Yeah, team. he's like like one or two. Yeah, and point total points, which is kind of, um, I guess, really how it should be ranked. But they right. 
all you do it by the by wins and losses. But, right. I guess for the um, playoff seating, yeah. So, uh, but he uh, also has you know the second most given up, and of course my my team has given up the most points, and you know of course his second I've scored the second fewest points with you know with the exception of that one guy who stopped putting in a lineup for a while. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you know, he, Brian Matt, you know, said something to him about it, and he decided to put his lineup in last week when he played me. I, I, I would have maybe not finished in the basement had that not happened. Oh yeah, I guess he took <laughs> he didn't sign off. Yeah, yeah that was that was yeah. <laughs> that that was a bad timing. So and then he came back and just to beat you. That's kind yeah. of impressive. And then, you know. and this week put up fifty three. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, a couple of weeks I won by like 40, 50 points. You know, those like I, but then. There was other ones where you're like you're sweating it out, you know. Right. And then right. there was there's one week where I, uh, uh, I it was uh, Drew uh, was I needed a quarterback, and so I I, I picked um, uh, Teddy Bridgewater because I okay. said, well, he's gonna he's gonna play, you know, he played one week for uh, Breeze and or maybe a couple of weeks, and said, well, Breeze is probably gonna be out for another another week. That's what I was hearing from everybody. So I went ahead and said, oh, okay, I'll pick up Bridgewater, put him in there, and I I know. It's my fault. I didn't check on Sunday morning. Okay. I just kind of let it on cruise control. And lo and behold, they uh, decided, Reese decided he wanted to play. Right. <laughs> so uh, I got 0. 0.0, you know, for quarterback. Right. And uh, if I would have put any, uh, you know, guy in there, I would have gotten probably at least 15 points. And that was like the differential for winning that week. Right. And so I, I could have won that week with any, any, uh, more body in there than right <laughs> right exactly and that's and that's you know and that's how um you know sometimes there's you know sometimes things like that happen in the championship game i actually went out and got a guy and i i don't remember who it was it was a receiver for the chargers um that for whatever reason i forgot that there were there were games on saturday and i didn't set my lineup on saturday and when oh I yeah played, that's, that's... I have those Saturday games. It cost me the championship last year. That's, you know, had I put that guy in, I would have won. And, yeah, uh, that's, you know, and, uh, you know, that, that was a killer. And, um, but again, at least it wasn't for money. It was just for bragging rights. <laughs> so it wasn't. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. But, so. uh, yeah. Definitely got to have to check your lineups. I guess if you're going to be uh, on each day, there's games. And I, uh, I just failed to do that on that week. Right. And uh, just assume that uh, everything's cool, but uh, there's okay. always last minute stuff that happens. Right, <clears throat> right, and that always seems, um, you know, especially with the, you know, when you have a guy that's uh, questionable or or whatnot, um, mm-hmm. you know, you never know if he's going to play up until, you know, it's always a game time decision, and you hope that game time isn't, you know, the four o'clock yeah. game where all your other people have already played. Uh, you know, either on uh, Thursday or early games on Sunday. So, yeah. So um, another tip I picked up is uh, any any Patriot player you have, don't don't even worry about if they say questionable because <laughs> more than likely they're going to play because they they're notorious for putting people on injury list or like saying, oh well, he might he might not play. He's okay. And then they, like this Edelman, uh, he's he's been questionable almost every week. Okay. So then he ends up playing and does pretty good. Yeah. Right. So, right. It's good for enough um, uh, enough points to get you going. You know, I mean, <clears throat> if I would have just freaked out, say, "Oh, I'm, I'm going to switch out with someone," he may not play. I, I would have, yeah, I would have been uh, lost out on a pretty good point total there. So. Right. That's just one little <laughs> tidbit I picked up over the years. Right. Oh, that's that's an interesting uh, <laughs> observation and um, something to look forward to because I do have a guy. Uh, I have Dorsett from the Patriots, so that's. Uh, Again, not that it matters. For this yeah, season. they're kind of tricky with their with their injury uh, listings. That okay. kind of um, if we could just take a step back. Um, so, um, you know, when I had put out on the league, uh, you know, asking if anybody wanted to join the podcast, you know, you had said you were interested, and then you said you were off today. So obviously, um, you you have a job that you go to most days. Is that um, is that yes? Okay. I, yeah, I have a regular. Right, good job, but uh, I work for the city of Houston. Okay. In, uh, in the IT department of the library, actually okay. library system. Okay. And um, uh, another question: I know some of the folks that listen um, to the podcast all, often wonder. Um, so, have you uh, you lose your sight throughout your life, or is it something you were born with? Um, what's uh, you know what's your situation as far as uh, your vision goes? 
Well, I was born with the RP. Okay. Uh, Red Knights Pigmentosa. So uh, it has been since birth, but I still have some, you know, usable vision. You know, I could do, do some things visually. I don't have to rely totally on, I guess she's all uh, blindness. Okay. Uh, methods, okay. wherever. I mean, I, I do use the voiceover on the iPhone, though. I mean, I, right. I don't try to try to look at that and discern what's going on, on the screen, but I, uh, so I guess I'm partially sighted, I guess is what okay. I would say. Um, okay. Do you use a white cane to get around? Yes. Yeah, okay. I yeah. I mean, that's a, you know, similar situation <laughs> with me, you know, um, the thing that's frustrating to me is that, you know, when I was, when I was a kid, um, you know, everybody was, you know, the big thing was to save, I, I have congenital glaucoma and the big thing uh, for me was to try and save what, what vision I did have and, you know, never fully prepared to, as time went on and, you know, everybody knew it was going to, you know, you know, as you get older, you know, people's vision changes to begin with, let alone when you've had, you know, multiple surgeries and, and so forth. And, um, you know, when I would go to my parents, you know, with my limited vision and say, hey, I want to play Little League Baseball. Oh, yeah, okay. And they'd let me do it. And of course, the coaches would freak out, like, where, where are we going to put him? We can't put him in the infield because you know, might get killed there. So they put me in the outfield. And of course, I had little to no chance at seeing anything out there. Um, you know, so it's kind of funny. And, and um, you know, like you, I, uh, you know, I do use my vision, although you know, as, as time goes on, I use it a little less and, and try to rely on it less again, because I, you know, will see something wrong or, um, you know, uh, something along those lines, use voiceover and obviously some, some other apps on the iPhone that, you know, make things a lot easier for, for us that maybe, you know, 10 years ago weren't available, which, um, you know, makes things, you know, this app, for example, that we do the fantasy football in, um, you know, as far as that goes and, you know, in the other league, the, the app was terrible as far as accessibility goes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, I, I do most stuff on a desktop computer because, and I use an, I use a Mac because you can zoom in very easily and, and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's just made it, you know, you, I, I have the screen reversed so I can make it big and, you know, light on dark and instead of uh, dark text. And, and it just makes it so much easier to, you know, to function between the two. Um, but I'm a very visual person and that made, that makes everything difficult, you know, as far as, you know, um, you know, listening to a phone number. And that's why, like I told you, I had initially texted the wrong number because I was relying on, you know, what was in the transcript, not what was, you know, what was in the, in the, the actual voicemail when I listened. So, um, yeah. so it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a, uh, a good thing that, uh, you know, the iPhone and the different apps, you know, is at a museum over the weekend where I had some time before the program that I was there for got started. So I was just wandering around and I had seeing AI open, you know, so when I would, you know, and I just had it, I was just walking around with my cane and, you know, there were in front of the displays of, of the, the different artifacts that I was walking by, there was, you know, stuff that was written that of course I couldn't see. Um, but when my phone started talking to me, I'd stop and I'd, you know, hold it still and listen to what was there and say, oh, okay. And, you know, sometimes right, if there's something yeah. big, you know, I, you know, I'd take a picture, you know, I, you know, I love doing, you know, what I call the blind selfie, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, in, in front of stuff like that. And sometimes they come out and sometimes they don't. And, um, you know, again, it's, you know, when you can listen to your phone say, you know, you know, one person to the, in the le upper left-hand corner, I know I want to lower it a little bit or, or whatnot. Yeah, so, it's very, uh, very helpful with taking pictures, all that, well, the voice yeah. cues. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, it's, yeah. it just makes it so easy. They've improved that a lot, too, I think, in this latest iOS, with the uh, directions on how to hold the camera. Right. So, um, you know, I use the you know, seeing AI and the... Also, uh, I also have an Envision one that uh, that they uh, they charge a subscription for. Okay. I kind of use them both, but I'm not sure which is really better. But okay, um, I, uh, it, I it's the Vision people are working on more updates. They're kind of doing a little more aggressive right development. Ha have you tried using Ira at all since it's become <clears throat> the the short calls are free? Yeah, I do use that. Uh, Pretty frequently, you know, for things for okay. short tasks. Like, I got this instant pop, yeah, you know, I guess over uh, 
the summer and uh even though it has it has race buttons it's still kind of hard to remember which ones are which right and of course the little display you know on the number of minutes sometimes it's kind of unclear what you have it on so i will typically call them and they'll they'll tell me what it says and i'll okay i'll you know, set up then all it takes about a minute to ask you real quick right they'll okay. like take a picture sometimes and say i'll oh, hold it still i'll take a picture i can examine it okay yeah. so yeah they they do a good job there uh I think a little more efficient than uh, well, a lot of people like that other one, the, the be my eyes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I know some I, people use that and you, you know, that's uh, um, I think by doing the shorter calls, Ira, you know, the making them free, I think Ira kind of is trying to take care of, <laughs> I mean, because again, like you say, most of the things that, that I would use it for. And I actually just used Ira for the first time a week or so ago when everybody in the house was sleeping. And, you know, my daughter who doesn't live at home anymore, you know, she was sleeping and I couldn't just take a picture and send it to her and say, Hey, what does this say? Um, mm -hmm. I said, Oh, I'll try it. And, and, um, and, and yeah, it was, you know, in within two minutes, the, whatever it was I needed seeing, and I don't remember what it was at this point, you know, it was done and, and, and we hung up and, um, uh, um, you know, it just makes it just makes you know again all the all the all the different options that we have on the on the phone. Like Serena had said in one of those that blind text shows back a while ago, you know the amount of equipment that it replaces um, that you know back in the day you would need to get. You know, the, now there's different apps that you could do. You know, between seeing AI and and KNFB Reader, which I I used to use a little bit. Um, you know, Ira, yeah. any of the Ira stuff, you know, any of that, it just makes, it just makes life a, a little easier for us. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's, a, it's nice to have, and it's always in your pocket, you know, it's right yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things you have to do in one little package. I mean, yeah. You don't have to, like the GPS, I mean, uh, they used to have to carry a backpack with a, like a laptop and <laughs> I don't know, it was a whole setup, you know, you're like wearing 20 pounds of gear and right. so, just to, uh, Find your way around right right exactly and, uh, you just hold it in your hand or you know it's like it's amazing yeah yeah it just it just makes it just <clears throat> makes life a lot easier for us and um um now since you are in you're, you're in the houston area right you're you're yes okay so um so are, are you a member of the uh, national federation of the blind uh no i'm not a, not an active member but okay I'm there convention here right that well that's that was the, that was the reason for asking because i know that uh um you know i went to my first convention this year in in uh, las vegas which um was nice uh, you know even after i had some travel issues getting there uh, which of course got me a podcast episode out of it so at least i at least that happened but um yeah <laughs> but uh um you know, I'm I'm excited to uh, to go to Houston, and I I plan to uh, you know maybe book a couple days early and either you know go down and you know go to the beach for a little bit before or uh, something like that, just just so I don't miss any this year. You know, I it was you know I missed about half of the convention because of uh, the travel issues. So so uh, yeah. So Hopefully yeah, they'll so. have some side trips you can take. You know, like right. <laughs> we'll uh, organize like that's what they used to do with these conventions. They'll have. A, a, side trips that uh, right different things going on and, uh, yeah do you do you travel do you travel much outside of houston do you go do you go uh, and do things on your own or do you i do sometimes i mean i haven't traveled a lot in uh, recent years um because i've got young kids and we don't really do a lot of oh okay adventure traveling <laughs> that's that, right that's all you need to really but, say. <laughs> uh, I, I do uh <laughs> I, I have been involved in the ski for light uh, organization Okay. Uh, for the, the cross country skiing. Okay. I'm not sure you're familiar with that or not. But, I'm not uh, familiar with the program, but I'm. But that sounds. So you so you do cross country skiing? I mean that's. Yeah, this I've done it two years, and this okay. will be my third year coming up. So, uh, it's a little novel for for me because we don't get to see snow and right. No one will. So and then, of course, we'd never be able to do any cross country skiing. Otherwise, now some of these people that come are from northern climates and okay they, well of course a lot of the guides are very very experienced you know they you know, like super skiers <laughs> okay but they you know so the guy they'll you know basically what happens is you you uh you ski next to your guide and they have these tracks that they lay on the snow with a special little uh, tractor thing i guess they make like two 
parallel tracks. Okay. And then you put your skis in one set of tracks and then either the guide can be there or someone else can pass you if they're faster than you. Okay. You know, they can get into the second track and go around you. <clears throat> and, uh, and that's how we kind of keep going the right direction. Right. And, um, so you know, it's, it's pretty fun. There's lots of whole week. Uh, they, uh, they have activities to it, you know, in the evening, different extra activities you can do. And okay. And where, where do you go for that? Well, they, they move it around, uh, in this year it's in Wyoming. Okay. And last year was in uh, Colorado. Wow. Boy, that and sounds neat. Year. Yeah. And then they've had, it, I think in Michigan, they've had it in, um, Alaska, I think one time. Wow. I don't think they do the East Coast much. Maybe there's not enough snow or something. Right, but, or or the uh, yeah the uh, yeah. Huh. Uh, although there are there are local organizations on the East Coast. I know that, that do do that. Uh, I don't know if you're in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they have one in their state, but I know in New England they have one like Boston. Okay. Uh, Boston area, I think they do one where they have they have you know more frequent kind of weekend getaways where you can go but just for a few days okay um <clears throat> and uh so okay. that's, that's a, yeah that's ski for light yeah. ski for light i have to i have to make a note of that and i will i'll put something in the show notes i'll find the links and uh and put that in the show notes because that is always something that you know again just things to you know to keep active and something to look forward to that you know you feel like you can do not necessarily on your own but um you know just to you know be able to you know any kind of sports I, you know again i'm hugely into sports and i always have been um and you know to do things i i have a friend who um who actually is trying to qualify for the boston marathon and ran the other day there was a philadelphia marathon the other day he ran in that and I, which i believe was one of the qualifying things and i just don't i just don't have i just don't have 26 miles in me um you know walking i could walk all day long um <laughs> yeah running yes. no i can't can't do it so, i yeah i did also Got to start getting into running too. Uh, okay. This or local organization that does um, guiding. You know, they guide um, both blind and also people that have uh, amputations. Okay. So uh, I I started out pretty slow too. I mean, I wasn't really a big runner. I mean, I I was more of a walk. Okay. Take long walks or so. I kind of gradually got up to doing like three miles, say, without stopping. And then okay. And I did, you know, just kind of kept building onto it. I eventually did a half marathon last oh, wow. January with them. And uh, with the, you know, we had, well, they give you two guides during the race. One is, is tethered to you with a, like a you know, little elastic uh, tether or rope tether. And then the other okay. one is kind of runs interference and tries to get people out of the way and like it's water. And, okay. <clears throat> and then they, they can switch off to, you know, when one gets tired and wants to. I guess it is a little harder for them to be tethered to somebody rather than running on your own. Right. Cause then you're, Sometimes. they're kind of stuck with your speed. Yeah. And, uh, they're, and they're kind of more, feel more responsible. I got, I got to tell them about every little, there's a lot of you know, things they have to keep in mind. I'm sure it's pretty kind of stressful for them. Right. So, right. Right. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> um, but uh, it is the Houston Marathon's pretty big race. There's like 30,000. Wow. Uh, okay. Total participants. So it was, now, some of them were doing the full full distance, you know, distance of course. But okay. Kind of the half okay. They break it down on over the weekend. Do one on Saturday and one on Sunday. Uh, they actually start on both the same starting line, but you have different. Yeah, you know, I mean, you have the same same start and finish. Okay. But the marathon people just run a different course. Gotcha. You know, okay. They all end up at the same. Okay, because yeah, so, here in Philadelphia they did. <clears throat> You know, they did, you know, they, there was an 8K and there was the half marathon on Saturday and then Sunday was the marathon. And oh, okay. so, uh, so I, I don't know how the routes compared if they were, you know, same start and finish or, or how that worked out. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, anybody that, you know, that has any kind of vision issues that does any kind of sports, whether it's that and, and I, a year or so ago, I remember hearing, uh, uh, blind abilities podcast about uh the hockey uh, the guys that played hockey and um 
and stuff like that. And, uh, and I just, I, you know, it, again, it's just something, you know, just feel like I'm doing something when I, you know, participate in something, whether, you know, when my wife is busy, uh, you know, she was busy a week, a week or two ago, and I ended up going out and part of this, uh, blind meetup group that gets together basically every month. Sometimes it's at a museum. Sometimes we go out to dinner and, and, um, you know, it's just, it's just refreshing to go out, you know, on my own without, you know, you know, saying, you know, having somebody with me and, you know, finding my way there. And it just, it just feels, it just feels, you know, good to me at least to, you know, to do stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So I would imagine you feel the same, but yeah, we have a lot of activities, you know, for, you know, quite a few groups in here uh, in Houston that new activities. And um, I mean, there's one of the best, yo there's a yoga um, class that okay. that's like two days a week. And there's, um, well, there's actually another, there's actually two organizations that do kind of the, the running sports and other one's called Achilles. I think they're a, a national organization. Okay. So there, there may be one in, I'm sure there's one in your area. Okay. Um, I mean, they not only do running, but they will do like kayaking and okay, uh, rock climbing and other other kind of. I think they did skydiving actually. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, I, don't, I guess that's more of a daring. You don't really have to be yeah. in great shape. You just have to be. Right. Uh, you know, to be just uh, kind of have to take that first step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, so. Uh, yeah, my dad, my so, yeah. dad was a uh, was was a uh, in World War II was a tail gunner, and his plane got shot down. He couldn't. I said to him, "Dad, you ever wanted to skydive?" He's like, "I did it once. That was the plane was on fire. I had to." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> that would bring back flashbacks. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> a pleasure, like as a hobby or and, yeah. So, um, so uh, all right. Well, I do appreciate you coming on today, uh, David, and. Um, and uh, you have your work cut out for you this weekend against the Astoria Knights, who is Brian's team. And, um, you know, the projections, yeah, yeah, I don't know how the projections work out, but uh, you are projected at this point to have more points than him. So if that holds, yeah. you're in. And uh, then well, it'll be interesting need, uh, to see. I need a Lamar Jackson to pull a hamstring or something. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then, no, uh, I think he's got him. Yeah, yeah he does. And, uh, oh, yeah, I, and, didn't, I didn't think about that. That's true. He, uh, <laughs> well, he really tore it up last night, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll have a down game. I mean, everybody's kind of having at least one down game. Right. Some right. Point, just, yeah. So. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so again, I do. Niners defense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah, and that yeah, is, that's yeah. a tough matchup for him, I think. So, yeah. uh, it'll be interesting to see. So, that. Yeah. And I, I have to, I have to be honest. My daughter is a huge Ravens fan and, um, you know, to see them doing well as they are, um, she's very excited and happy and, uh, and uh, as am I, because, you know, my hometown team, the Eagles are, are mediocre at best. And uh, I actually adopted the Browns a year or two ago because just because, <laughs> just because it was, uh, you know, I figured they're not going to let me down because they're never good. And this year they look like they might have been good, but it still didn't pan out. So Yeah, they got a lot of early season hype, you know. Yeah. yeah. So the, they may still be in the playoffs. You never know. But, right. Uh, they can make a run yeah, late. and uh, they could. But the Ravens, or the old Browns, as I sometimes call them, uh, you know, they yeah. uh, <laughs> they are. Uh, yeah, they're, they're a well-run team. I mean, I think they've got good, good coaching and all that. Right. Uh, they've had really, usually uh, pretty consistently above average or good, you know. Right. <clears throat> Well, again, uh, thanks again for coming on the I Can't See You podcast. I wish you the best of luck this year and into the playoffs. Hopefully you uh, you score huge and uh, you bring home the, the, your championship, your first championship. Yeah, thank you. Well, hope, it, hope it goes good. And uh, <laughs> Thanks for having me on your podcast. David, it was my pleasure, and I really appreciate you coming on today. I have to tell everyone a funny story. Uh, David had reached out to me uh, before we had recorded, a day or so before we had recorded, and he left a message uh, at 646-926-6350, and something that you can do as well. And I listened to it, the voicemail that he left me uh, the night that he left it, but then when I was referring back to it, I was referring back to the... Um, uh, transcript of it that Google also sends out because it's a Google voice number. And instead of saying his name was David, as he said in the recording, it, it 
in the transcript said his name was Nathan and it gave me a wrong phone number. And it was just kind of funny that, um, it was, uh, it was so wrong. I always thought that, uh, my iPhone, which I have named Emily Latella when I dictate and it gets it all jumbled up and mixed up. Uh, I just thought it was funny that, uh, Google is uh, prone to that as well. Uh, but again, David, I do appreciate you coming on today and I do wish you the best of luck. Uh, it is a nail biter between you and the Astoria Knights, uh, for this weekend. Uh, it looks like six one hundredths of a point is all that separates you in the projections for this weekend's game and for the playoffs. So I do wish everybody good luck in the blind abilities, fantasy football league this weekend. I am whether I win or lose going to finish dead last, as I've mentioned multiple times and kind of sad for me, but uh, you know, it wasn't for a lack of trying, Um, but I did enjoy it. I always enjoy uh, doing the fantasy football And again, um, just a reminder, if you do have a second and could spare a couple of bucks, I would appreciate a donation to my birthday fundraiser over at facebook.com slash David Benj. At this point, I've posted a few more blind selfies from the Penn Museum visit last weekend. So you may have to scroll down a little bit to get to the um, to get to the actual uh, fundraising page. So uh, and and on this Thanksgiving Day, I do want to Uh, say thank you very much. I I do appreciate you all. I'm thankful for all of you who listen each week. And uh, as we uh, come close to uh, the year uh, of uh, podcasts from the I Can't See You podcast uh, started in December of last year. Although I have to say, I think the first couple were recorded in November of last year, but we didn't launch until December until I had a few episodes under my belt. Uh, We launched four in one shot. Um, So it is coming up on a year, I think, December 4th, uh, which is, uh, as I'm recording, this is about a week away. And um, again, I am thankful for you listening. I'd be even more thankful if you rated and reviewed the podcast because it'll help us continue to grow uh, from this episode, which is, again, episode 50 and into the future. And if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. And again, with Black Friday coming tomorrow and the holiday shopping season underway, Uh, I would appreciate any uh, help you could give. If you see an Amazon link on our site, uh, I do talk about some items that that I've used in the past and that have been helpful for me, whether it's blindness related or just something cool that I use um, or like. Uh, I'd appreciate if you go through my link. Uh, Again, I earn a little commission uh, because I am an Amazon associate and it doesn't cost you anything additional. Again, I appreciate you listening to episode 50 of the I Can't See You podcast. Please have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast. Follow David on Twitter. He is at David Bench.